All right, here we are, third in the series of small films, just demonstrating how the water features work on this small two acre block. All right, let's go and follow the same path as we've done in the last two films. Large amount of water, upwards of close to 200 mil have fallen in 24 hours. I'll just take you down and just, we'll just follow the path of the water and just see what the water does. And I might do another film later, just going into the details of the, the other functions of the, of the systems. But right now, let's just have a look at what all this water is doing and where it comes from and where it goes. So this is two years since the original film. I'm a little bit late, I usually do them in November. We're now in February 2022. Um, you can see where we're discharging now. Everything's just absolutely full. Let's go up. I'm right in the middle of a, of a bit of a microburst, so it'll give you a good idea of actually how much water we have to manage on this relatively steep block. It's the, not just the volume of the water that we have to manage, it's the the velocity of it because it it just wants to pick up so much speed and turbulence as it as it moves downwards. House pads always dry. We've got that back drain there. We've got the chicken pen in. We'll do another separate film of that one just to go into the details of all the function of that one but it's working very very well and you can see the kind of water that's coming down I mean once you're full in these situations you're full you can't you can't hold back any more water I mean we've had a wet season this year so um, we were fully saturated so when you get this kind of downpour you've just you're discharging almost straight away which is fine but there's plenty of features here to to still mitigate some of that velocity and some of that charge but let's just go back and walk the original route that we've walked in the last two films and um, we can have a quick look at the vegetation as we go because you can see the growth but I'm just going to focus on the water and we'll come back and do another film and go into detail about how this water feature is actually benefiting the vegetation and what's actually happening there and how we we manage it and harvest it and process it. But you can see what kind of water comes up here. You can see that all the water is being designed to run on contour so to basically spread it, so we can spread it from that side of the block all the way, sorry, that, that side of the orchard there, all the way to that side of the orchard. So the orchard gets an even spread, even though we're on a domed hill where the water would tend to shed to the outside, we've managed to spread the water evenly throughout the whole orchard watering upwards uh, of probably in this area about 60 fruit trees so as you look down the water is being evenly dispersed and we've got a couple of holding ponds that hold a couple of thousand litres just to help with extra soakage but again at this 
level you don't need it. So if you see along this swale here, we've got an even spread all the way along, evenly distributing any kind of nutrient that's running down and depositing it in the swales. Everything is even, nothing's flowing fast up here. We'll do a quick, just a quick walk through here just to get an idea of where the water is and what it's doing. And we are absolutely full. We've got about 100,000 litres of potable water, which is full. We've got about um, 150,000 litres, uh, sorry, no, about 200,000 litres of ground water in dams and ponds, which are full. So we're sitting on close to about 300,000 litres of, of storage now. So we've, we manage to use the block to catch, spread, and then we've got reservoirs to store it from tanks to in-ground in ponds. And you can see, if you follow the water, you can see where we can, we try and disperse the water. As you can see, it's following the footpath here, but there's a few diversions here that is just kind of slowing the water down. Every little bit helps. It helps disperse it and helps slow it down. And then we get to the big system here, which we're catching the bulk of the water. I'll go this way so you can get a bit of an idea of what you're looking at. You're looking at, basically, from here, all the way over to the fence line, which is about 100 meters in that direction there that I'm pointing the camera, is all contained by ponds and swales. So all water that comes down from the back of the block up there, from the top of the hill up there, all through this uh, forested bit here, is held up here and caught in these ponds until we are full and then it's discharged at two points in the system. We'll go have a closer look at that. Now, excuse all the mess, we're still rearranging things at the moment, but the mainframe is almost pretty much where we want it to be. All the water features are in. We've just got to shift a few, few things around, get this tank out of the way, and um, really get into trimming up and getting into the detail of the system and fine tuning it. But the main frame, where the water goes, how much water we get, what we can do with it, is all in place now. And you can see there is the main discharge. There's lots of things we can do with that water there that we're discharging now. There's lots of water, um, options that we can do around this area, which is unfinished, as you can see, so that we can we can work out where we're going to then direct or what we're going to do with this water that is being discharged. And this is why making this film is helpful to me because I can then go back and reference where the water wants to go, how much water is there, and what the possibilities are for it in these situations and what we can do with it. This is quite a good size pond, this one. This one holds about 100,000 litres at least, which is pretty impressive for the type of block we're on. We're on a small two acre block, which is mainly 15 degree slope, so it can be challenging to get water bodies in to those kind of conditions. So we've got close to probably 80 to 100 meters. Sorry, probably more like 60 to 80 meters 
of pond and swale feature that interrupt the flow of this this runoff and then is used to our advantage to the point that we then discharge at full. So this is the boundary of the block here and the water leaves this level spillway right at the edge of the block. It's leaving it now all along this level sill and it works in in um, sync with the central level sill in the system so that when we do get these major rain events we are safe the infrastructure is safe it can discharge uh, and, and and no damage is, is done so you're able to safely catch large amounts of water but control it safely at the same time so that we don't cause any damage as a result of, of such modifications. So I'll have a quick walk down and have a look at the bottom one. We'll go into the, the trees and all that in another film because uh, you can see the growth factor on this stuff is just phenomenal. Like we're only talking two years on this system. That system over there is actually only six, six to 12 months old, that one there. And, and that has a, had no, no irrigation or anything other than, uh, other than the natural runoff. Look at that system there. So from the fence line where we were, all the way along, through the large pond, the swale over there goes to the fence line. It's a, a large pond uh, about one third of the way, and then another swale with the spillway and then all the way along to the smaller pond. And then down To the driveway hard surfaces taking the water away a little bit of water there actually diverts off the block down to the road the driveway culvert and down into the drain adjacent to the road a small amount of water there we we let go we could put a diversion drain across here and take that water over there but again, there's so much water at the moment that we really don't need any more water being diverted on, onto the block. It's all about just letting it go passively now because we are full.